in this tutorial we are going to go over the very basics of rigid bodies and shapes. A rigid body is something that has properties such as mass and inertia, it has a position and a velocity, while a shape is something that we can add to a rigid body to give it a geometrical representation. So a shape is something that has a volume, it is something that can collide with other shapes. To make things a little bit more clear, I'm going to add an empty actor to this level. So I'm just going to drag it out like this. And if we go over to the details panel, we can add a rigid body to it. So I can press add and simply search for rigid body. So now we have actually added a rigid body to this actor, but it, it doesn't really have a geometrical representation yet. So I can press play here and we will see nothing because, well, the actor, the, the rigid body, uh, it is falling uh, since it's being pulled by gravity, as we can see here in the cell component of the of the location. Um, but we can't really see anything, so it's not very interesting yet. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to give it a shape. So I'm going to select the rigid body. And I'm going to look for the box shape. And notice that we add the box shape as a child to the rigid body. This tells the rigid body that it owns this shape. So now if we go ahead and press play, we can see that the box is actually falling with the rigid body. So coming over to the details panel again, we're going to take a quick tour of these properties. I'm not going to go into everything, but we'll cover the most important things. So first off we have uh, mass properties and by default, the mass and inertia of the rigid body will be automatically calculated for us, given the shapes owned by the rigid body. But if we want more granular control over this, we can actually say that we do not want to auto-generate the mass, and we can set whatever mass value we like. I'm going to restore this for now. Uh, another very important property is the motion control. This tells AGX Dynamics if this rigid body should be a dynamic body or, for instance, a static body or a kinematic body. The static motion control basically says that this body is not movable, so it's static in the world. If I were to copy this actor now, so that we have two boxes and I can select the upper one and put that to dynamic. The bottom one here is static, so if I go ahead and press play, well, the static body will just stay and the, the dynamic body will fall. So they will collide now thanks to the shapes that they own. So a rigid body can have several shapes. If I select the rigid body here, I can add a sphere shape to it, drag it out that we can see it. So now this rigid body has two shapes and they will, will move together like they were part of one. So if we press play now. So the last property of the rigid body that I'm going to go over before moving on to shapes is the transform target. So I'm going to delete the bottom actor there. I'm also going to delete the sphere shape that we added. So now we have just this rigid body. So coming down in the details panel we see that we have something called transform target. By default it is set to self. What this means is when this rigid body moves in 3D space it will actually affect only itself and its children. The, the position of uh, this component is what will, will move in the world. But if we if we would like we can actually tell this, for example, to uh, use the root component as the transform target. In this case, if I press play, what will happen is that the rigid body will actually move the, the root component of this actor. So if we look at the, the Z component of the location for this actor now, we can see that it is indeed falling. While if I stop this, go back to the rigid body and Put it back to self, 
Now if we press play, we select the actor, we see that the actor itself is not moving, but the rigid body component is what is actually moving. So it's something that, that you can keep in mind. Uh, usually this it is fine to keep this uh, at the default value self. Uh, one thing to note is that if you have several rigid bodies in one single actor, you never want one of those to be set to root. Because if we do that, we will have one rigid body trying to pull the whole actor that actually contains several rigid bodies. So that will actually not produce a valid result. Now that we have a basic understanding of what a rigid body is, we're gonna move on to talking about shapes. I'm gonna give us a little bit more room to work with here. And we can start by just scrolling down here in this list. We can see that we have a, a few different types of shapes. Uh, I'm not gonna go into each of those, but let's look at a few. So we, we have already seen the box and the sphere. There is also a cylinder shape and a capsule shape. So all of these shapes are what we call primitive shapes. They are, let's add a, a material here before continuing, just so that we can see them a little bit better like this. Okay, that's better. So these are primitive shapes. Uh, they are excellent to use for collision detection because mathematically it is very fast and efficient to calculate overlap between these. So we could imagine wanting to have any arbitrary mesh and use that as a collision shape. We can do this using the tri-mesh shape. So first off, I'm gonna delete these two and then add the AGX tri-mesh shape. So what this will do is that it will look for triangle information in any static mesh and use that to create a collision shape from it. So I am going to add a regular old static mesh as a child to this tri-mesh shape. And this static mesh, let's use this shape pipe that's part of the starter content. So one very important thing to do uh, is to make sure in the trimesh shape that the mesh source location is set, in this case, to child component. This means that this, the trimesh shape will look in its child component for a static mesh. So we, we could have this the other way around. So this static mesh could be the parent of the tri-mesh shape. This is also perfectly fine, but we have to make sure that in this case, the mesh source location is set to parent component. To test this out, let's add a new empty actor to the level. I'm gonna add a box shape. And basically just construct a floor. So notice that I didn't I didn't actually add a rigid body this is only a box shape. Um, this means that that the shape will be static in the world. So if we press play here then we can see that indeed this pipe is now used as a collision shape. So looking now a little bit closer at the properties that we can set for a shape component, I am going to remove this static mesh and tri mesh, and again add a box shape. Give us a little bit of room, and we can see that we can, as a regular static mesh component, we can put a material on this as we did the, did before. Uh, we have the half extent. Uh, this affects the size of this shape. Similarly, if I add a sphere shape, it has a radius value that will affect its size. I'm going to reset this. Uh, coming down, we have something called shape material. And a shape material is something that tells AJX Dynamics the physical properties of this shape. So for example, the surface friction or restitution. 
that can be set in the shape material. Then we have the can collide toggle that basically says if this shape can collide with other shapes. So if we press play here, notice that the box will collide with the floor. But if I were to toggle this can collide, press play again, the box will just fall right through the floor. So lastly, I would like to quickly mention something called collision groups. So here in the details panel again, we have something called collision groups. This is a way that we can group shapes together or put shapes into groups, but we can later disable collision between those groups if we like. You can find more information about all of this in the AGX Dynamics for Unreal user manual.